Hey Dylan, um, this is Miss Sanderson. I'm your new global history teacher. So um, I didn't get a chance to meet with you today. Hopefully we can set up a time in the near future um, so we can get to know each other and figure out what I can do to best help you. But I did wanna make this video going over the work that I would like you to complete so we can get in some grades and also so you get caught up on what we're learning in this class. Since I know you're coming from a global nine class, I wanted to go over the things that we learned last trimester as well as the things that we started learning in the beginning of trimester two. Um, after you complete these, you'll be totally caught up. And next week, we're actually starting a new unit. So hopefully you can get uh, working on these two assignments so we can get you to the place where everybody else is at. So um, this assignment is it. Hold on. I got to change that. Um, so this assignment's divided into three different sections, and we're going over two of the units that we learned about in the beginning of the year. So the first one is going to be um, about the Enlightenment. So you're going to watch this video first that gives you a quick overview about what the Enlightenment was, as well as this um this reading here, again, we wanted to keep it nice and short for you. But basically what this is talking about is the, the Enlightenment, which was this time in the 1700s when people began to spread new ideas. Whenever I see the word Enlightenment, I see the word light in it. And I think of like a light bulb going off where you have this new idea in your head. So the kind of the old ideas, and as you can see up here, were that the church was in charge of everything, that the church knew what was true and that science wasn't right and that um, kings and queens were directly given power from God and those were the people who had all of the power in the world. People again began to question this and say, well, that's, that can't be true. Um, there's got to be a reason for why things are the way they are. So people began to kind of use science. Um, they began using science to experiment and to understand the way our universe is structured or the way that things work on Earth. And this then led people to say that if we can use reasoning and science to understand why things happen in nature, what if we use this to understand how people are? So they began to um, spread new ideas about how the government should work and what kind of rights people should have and who should decide them. So this is a time where they begin to challenge the old ways of the past and spread new ideas. And these new ideas were things like the fact that people have natural rights, like they have the right to life, liberty, and property, and that you were born with these and they can't be taken away. Um, they also believe that no, not one person should have all the power in the world, um, that it should be divided and that different groups of people should be able to share that power and make decisions to come to the best conclusions. A lot of these ideas then led to revolutions or huge changes in the way the world was structured. And that's what we're going to talk about next. One really important thing to note here, and it says this on this slide, is that the people who spread these ideas, who were spreading these ideas, um, were primarily white men, men who were educated, who typically had enough money to, to have that education. So um, it's important to note that their idea of who had rights and who should have power still really only extended to white men, not women and not people of color. So there's a quick multiple choice question here that you are questions that you'll answer just to review that. And then I move on to the second topic, which is the French Revolution. Again, there's a quick video that kind of talks through what it is but um, there's a longer definition and description of what was going on. So basically what was happening with this one is that France was divided into three different groups of people. We had on the bottom, the third estate, which were the commoners and primarily peasants. They made up most of the population. In the middle, you have nobility. And then the top, you had the king and the queen and the church, the most powerful group. So the king and the queen had all the power basically, as did even the second estate, but the third estate had no power. They were mostly peasants and they did all the work. However, they also paid the highest taxes, meaning they were the one paying the king and the queen and giving them money to do all the things that they wanted to do, like have parties and spend money on war and things like that. This is a problem. Um, people began to get really upset with the way the king was abusing his power and they didn't have any rights. They had no political rights. They had no money. And they basically were kind of like, I don't want to say they were slaves because that's not accurate, but they 
were people without any sort of say in, in their own country. So this combined with the fact that the king and the queen kept spending too much and were in debt and the new ideas that were being spread from the Enlightenment about how people should have more of a say in their government led to a revolution in France. And I'm gonna let you watch the video and read through the rest of that. But um, a lot of different things happen. Um, and it's a pretty crazy um, revolution. So you'll read that. And then there's a few questions here as well. Um, the last part is just a little bit of a reflection about um, some of some issues that are connected and then um, how this is also related to what's going on in our world today. So that's the first assignment. And then the second assignment um, is going to be going into what we've been learning about for the last few weeks, which is this thing called the Industrial Revolution. Um, the Industrial Revolution is this time when we go from a farm-like to a more city-like urban um, area. So you're going to go through these slides and kind of read about this. And then you'll see there's some points where you, act, um, you have to add in some information. So you're going to read about the causes of the Industrial Revolution and then respond to this. Um, and a lot of the causes of this are the fact that there was new inventions being made to make production easier. Then you're going to um, also look at the effects of this. So now we have all these new inventions that are making things easier, but how did this impact people? Um, and there's some positive, some negative influences. So you're gonna be looking at some primary source documents to read about the effects. There's a couple of videos in here as well, and then there's a couple more sources. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to write a journal from the perspective of somebody living during then, and that is it for this assignment. Um, I know there's a lot of slides here. It's just a lot of information. Um, so I hope this video helped give you a little bit of an overview of what you're doing. So make sure you try to get these done as soon as possible so we can get you caught up, and then you don't have to worry about making anything up for this class.